Hey, it's Rencode here, and today I'm going to showcase how we can call an REST API from Kotlin using pure Kotlin, meaning we're going to be using new external libraries. And this is definitely not the best way of doing it, because other libraries can make this process way easier, but I thought it would be interesting to showcase how we can do it using pure Kotlin. So in this example, I'm just simply going to be calling a very simple open API which I've actually used in the past for some demonstrations, which is the cat fact API from Ninja. And this API simply allows us to call this simple endpoint of slash fact, and it then simply returns a cat fact. So very simple, very straightforward. And as mentioned, it's open, it's free, so we need no API key or any registered users or anything like that, which makes it very, very easy and simple. So I'm just going to go through how I would do this in Kotlin. And because it's pure, as we see also from the imports, we're kind of using some of the components that's like Java, but Kotlin, Kotlinified, I guess. But let's just actually go through it. We have our API URL, which is going to be a string, obviously. We then have a huge try block to ensure everything goes as planned. And if it does not, we then catch any exception and print the exception more or less. So very simple. We then first have to create an URL of the type URL. And note, I've added most of the types for my variables, which is not very necessary, at least not for this case, but I thought just to showcase and make it very clear what's going on, I would add them anyway. So we have our URL, which is created a bit complicated because it's not really intended this way, but we have our URI, create our URL, and then to URL. But more or less just a box containing the string of our URL, which can then be used to create a connection. We then create a connection of the type HTTP URL connection, which is like the main functionality allowing us to actually do a pure Kotlin Java connection. And we simply do a URL.open connection as an HTTP URL connection. We then define that for this call or this connection, we're going to be using the request method get. We then check if the response code is 200 or OK. We will then continue with our reading from this endpoint. Otherwise, we will not. So we have our response code, reconnection.response code, we print the response code to our console. We then check if the response code is HTTP OK, or it would be the int value of 200, as we can also see here. Meaning everything is going as planned. We continue. We then use the buffered reader, which is more or less just an element that allows us to go through a stream of data. In this case, all the data from our response. So we have a buffer reader, which is going to be input stream reader, gotten from our connection.input stream, meaning this is going to be a stream of data containing the information from our endpoint. We then have some extra variables, our line and our response. We then have some Kotlin specific functionality where we use a while with our buffer reader. And let's go through it. So we have a reader.readline. So we we'll go through each line in our buffer reader in our stream of data. We then use a dot also, which is Kotlin specific, allowing us to define that we will extract the line. And we then continue to go through each element in our stream until the next element is null, which more or less you should think of it as going through our stream of data until we hit the end of the stream, or the next element is going to be empty, meaning there's no more elements left. And then for each element, we'll then simply add the line, so the extracted data from that point in the stream, and add it to our response, which is string builder, which more or less just a complex wrapper around a string, allowing us to continuously build it. But at this point, we have then gotten all our information from our reader. We then close the reader. And we then print the response to show which it actually worked. Or if we did not have an be okay, we just print unable to fetch data. And at the end, we then close the connection. So even if the connection failed, or we didn't get the expected result, we still ensure we close the connection. Again, because we're doing it very manually. So if we actually now try running this full example, we should see that we get first our response code 200, because we print the response code up here. And we then also see that we got our response data, which is it is a string, but it is going to be returned as JSON, so it's a string of JSON. But note again, it's Java, it's Kotlin, so it's just a string. 
at this point at least, we're not doing anything special. But we can see inside the string, we have our fact. And I can see that it's quite a long fact. So let's just try running a few times, just to show that it works. See if we get something a bit smaller. Oh, these facts are quite complicated, something about the breed and a lot of stuff and size. But just note, every time we call the endpoint, we get a new fact, and we can clearly see the setup works. And as mentioned, this is like at least our way of doing it using pure Kotlin. It's not an optimal way of doing it, and I would definitely suggest if you're using endpoint calls in your real project, you would either use a framework or some specific libraries. But I definitely think it's good to be able to do it in like pure languages to at least get a better understanding of how it actually works. So if you enjoyed this showcase of how we can connect to an API using a get method in pure Kotlin, please hit like and subscribe, and wish you all a wonderful day.